Good morning. Happy Sunday. I thought that it was time to read chapter two of Podkin 1E. I do hope that you enjoyed chapter one and that you are excited to hear chapter two. Let's see what happens. Chapter two, the worst bramble mass ever. The Gorm, first you need to know about them. Nowadays, thank the goddess, they are nothing but a bad memory. But back when your grandparents were young, rabbits lived in constant fear of their strange riders, of the screeching of the metal in the night and the echoing of their terrifying war horns. The Gorm, nobody knows exactly how they came to exist only that they were first seen in a little warren called Sandywell, up in the northern Edeby, where the Red River meets the sea. A meek little tribe of rabbits lived there, grey-furred, sable bunnies that liked fishing, sailing and building boats. They never caused any trouble and nobody paid them much attention until one day everything changed. Some say there was something in the river that got into their veins. Some say they tunnelled too far down and came across something cursed and poisonous. Others say it was the work of witches. Whatever the reason, they stopped being sandy well greys overnight and turned into something else. Something evil and unnatural. First the warren changed just a little at first, until eventually great spikes of jutting metal burst out of it, sticking up in the air like poison porcupine quills, and the land around became blackened and scorched. The waters of the Red River turned black and noxious as they ran past. Animals that lived in the woods and waters either died or became warped and ruined. Folk started calling the Woolworth Splinter Home and stayed well away, but that didn't help them. Next, the old sandy whale rabbits reappeared, except now you wouldn't have recognised them. They were clad head to foot in iron armour. Iron that metals, that metal that rabbits find impossible to work with and poisonous to the goddess herself. The sandy whale rabbits had not only shaped and moulded it, they had bonded it with it somehow. It seemed as though the metal had fused and pierced their very skin. It ran through their veins and bled into their eyes, turning them blank and rusty red. The rabbits used the metal to bend and shape the creatures around them as well. The dumb giant rats that all rabbits use are beasts of burden and the black crows of the nearby woods. They changed them into shrieking flocks of rusted metal harpies. When they rode out of Splinter Home, they came to devour and destroy, and they were called the Gone by all who feared them. If they called at your warren, then that was the end of you. They would kill you and your chieftain and his sons. They would rip your warriors into shreds. Then they would carry half you off to be changed into Godness knows what. The rest would spend miserable lives making food and supplies to fear their new masters, never knowing when they too would be dragged away, wailing in the night. It was a dark time for all rabbit kind, is what I am saying. It was in those days that Podkin One Ear lived. He wasn't a hero back then. He hadn't slain any giant rabbits or formed any robber bands and he hadn't even begun to think about rescuing maidens. In fact, he was only a young man, eight summers old. Oh, and he still had both his ears. Podkin was the son of Lopkin, chieftain of the Manbury Warren, which meant that someday he himself would be chieftain, just like his father's father had been and his father, all the way back to when the goddess first made the 12 tribes. For now, 
That all seemed a long way off and that was the way he liked it. He had an older sister called Paz who liked to boss him around as much as possible. Sisters like to do that. And a young kitten of a brother called Pook who didn't do much except chew things and ask for soup. You might think as a young rabbit that Podkin was already showing signs of heroism. Great skill with a sword, maybe. Bravery, courage, wisdom, determination. No, you would be wrong. If anything, he was perhaps the laziest, most spoiled son of the chieftain in the whole five rings. At least he was up until the start of this story. His father tried his best to prepare him for leadership with lessons in history, rabbit law and soldiering. But Podkin took great delight in avoiding them all. Daydreaming and snoozing were the only things he practised. 